So I see you did something to your leg. What's the deal? Oh, you think you got a sprain in your leg, huh? Well, I don't know. In your situation, I don't think you have many ligaments left. I think you might be worried more about a fracture than a sprain, bud. Well, I'll get back to you in just a minute. Hi, I'm Joel Alton, MD, also known as Dr. Bones, a disaster doctor of doomandbloom.net, where you'll find over 400 posts on medical preparedness for any disaster. I'm also the co-author with my lovely wife, Nurse Amy, of the Survival Medicine Handbook, number one Amazon bestseller in survival skills and also in safety and first aid. And thank you for all your support of the book, by the way, everybody. Uh, this, by the way, is the strange and wonderful T.D. Bird, my pal. Awesome, awesome bird, aren't you? We're both wearing gray today. You notice that? Isn't that something? Well, today I'd like to talk about joints. Our joints are truly marvels of engineering. They help provide mobility and locomotion and sometimes bear an incredible amount of stress without mishap. There are moving parts, however, and moving parts break down over time. In long-term survival situations, our level of physical exertion goes up a notch, it goes up two notches maybe, and the risk of injury to the joints increases as well. You can expect one of the most common injuries in your group to be an ankle, a wrist, a knee, or a finger sprain. Now, first some anatomy. A ligament is a fibrous band of tissue that connects one bone to another, usually over a joint. A sprain is caused when there is damage to a ligament because of extension beyond the normal range of motion. Now this is different from a strain. A sprain is different from a strain. A strain occurs when there's damage to a muscle or a tendon, which is its fibrous insertion into the bone. A complete tear across the tendon or ligament is known as a rupture. Now the most common signs and symptoms associated with sprains are bruising, swelling, and pain. It's a rare individual who has never experienced this injury sometime over the course of their life. Treatment for most sprains is relatively straightforward and follows the easy to remember RICES protocol, R-I-C-E-S. REST, R is for rest, it is important to avoid further injury by not testing the injured joint. Stop whatever actions led to the injury and you'll have the best chance to recover fully. Failure to rest is a common mistake for many athletes, for example, hikers, people like that, who will continue to stress the joint by continuing the activity they were doing. As a result, the partially healed ligament will re-injure itself and permanent damage may occur. In a survival scenario, you may not have the luxury of rest. If not, expect chronic problems in the weakened joint. I is for ice. Cold therapy decreases both swelling and pain. The earlier it is applied, the better effect it will have in speeding up the healing process. If you're in the wilderness, you might have to stick your ankle into a stream to get some cooling action, although there are cold packs, of course, that are useful to have in your backpack. Cold therapy should be performed several times a day for 30 minutes or so in the first 24 to 48 hours. This is followed by applying C is for compression. A compression bandage is useful to decrease swelling and should be placed after each cold therapy. This will help provide support to the joint as well. After applying some padding to the area, wrap an elastic ACE bandage starting below the joint and working your way up above it. The wrap should be tight but not uncomfortably so. Any tingling, increased pain, numbness tells you that the wrap is too tight and should be loosened somewhat. Additionally, an excessively tight wrap may affect the circulation. You may notice the fingertips or toes becoming white or even blue. You got it too tight in that case. E is for elevation. Elevate the sprain, like my good friend here did, above the level of the heart. This will help prevent swelling at the site of the injury. Swelling is caused by fluid that pools where the inflammation is. We call that kind of fluid edema, E-D-E-M-A, and it likes to accumulate where gravity will allow it to. By elevating the leg, you allow the fluid to process itself back into your circulation and aid the healing process, or at least not impede it. This also works for swollen ankles due to chronic medical problems like high blood pressure. Even pregnant women achieve relief from swollen ankles this way. S is for stabilization. Immobilizing the injury will prevent further damage. This may be accomplished by the compression bandage alone or may be best supported with a splint or a cast if the patient's unable to place much weight on the injured area. 
Splints may be commercially produced, such as a very useful SAM splint, S-A-M, or it could be improvised with sticks, cloth, or pillows and duct tape. Make sure the injured joint is immobile after placement of the splint. I am often asked how to tell the difference between a sprain and a fracture. Sometimes it's pretty easy, as when a straight bone suddenly zigzag in shape. Many times, though, it's quite difficult and hard to determine without x-rays, which certainly won't be available in a long-term survival situation. Even bone doctors, and Dr. Bones as well, can't tell for sure without modern technology like x-rays or MRIs. So how can you tell a fracture from a sprain in a power-down scenario? Well, you'd look for one or more of these signs. A fracture will generally have more pronounced swelling and bruising, but not always, so it's not 100%. A fracture is generally so painful that no traction or pressure may be placed on the injury. You could be helped off the field with a sprain, but you may have to be carried off the field with a fracture. A fracture may have a deep cut in the area of the injury. This is called an open fracture, and it's particularly dangerous due to the risk of infection. A fracture may present a grating sensation when pressing upon it. As you move your hand along the injured area, it may have a vague grinding or grating sensation as you get to the break. And of course, any motion where there is no joint is a sign of a fracture. If you suddenly have six knuckles on your index finger, you probably have broken your index finger. In a future video, we'll talk about how to treat a sprain and treat fractures both conventionally and with natural remedies when possible. This is Joe Alton, MD, also known as Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Mm -hmm.